Okay, so today I want to go over these, these form functions. And you probably realize that several of them the book already has you do. Um, but what I want you to be able to have is a really nice collection of functions that you can come back to any time for any project. For example, uh, the one that we're going to do is create a drop down for all 50 states. And there's a bunch of different ways that you can do this. You can have it so that it displays the state, the full state name, but then sends, but the actual value is the abbreviation. And that's probably what you'll use most often. You want people to be able to read the full state, but then in your database, the value, it's just going to store the two letter abbreviation. That way your database is a little bit smaller. Um, and there's also, when you're doing data types, if you set it, there's two different types of string, uh, strings that uh, databases can do, a set length or a variable length. A set length is you, you just say um, char is the, is the data type, characters. And if you set it to two, and that means every entry in that column has to be exactly two letters. Then you can set it to var char, which is variable characters. And we could say whatever the longest state is, we could say it could be that many, and then the database will accept anything up to that amount of characters. Having variable column widths can actually lead to fragmentation on your drive because the databases don't quite line up as much, especially if you go back in and you're updating these, these later. So um, that ends up decreasing the efficiency of your database just a hair. Uh, so I'd like to try and avoid that if at all possible. So this one we're going to make it so that you can choose whatever it is that you want. We could actually add that functionality into it. Now. The other thing that we have to do is, since this is a function, we're going to put the function in one page and then we're going to have it called in another. And in this instance, all I'm going to do is create a really quick, cheesy little form. I'm going to say billing address or something like that. And we can do, have a text field of your, let me do that with a label. Your address, your city, this will be state, and then we'll also have zip code. And then down at the bottom, have a little button. So where it says state, I'm going to fill in my nice little states function. This function is going to print out a drop-down menu for us to, to be able to select. So what I want to have is where it says state, I just want to be able to have a nice little PHP function that says form underscore state with parentheses, and it'll do all the work for me. So I realize some people are typing that in. I'll give you a sec to get that running. In all honesty, for this example, you don't need all of the stuff, the other form elements. We're just trying to get this one to work. The rest of them are kind of just there to see it in context. In order to start writing inside this form functions page that I've got, which is just a, a blank page, actually it's not even going to have any HTML in it, I've got to link my form to my form functions page. And typically that is done as an include at the very top level. And PHP does have a nice little include function, form underscore, spell that correctly, functions.php. Did I spell that right? Yeah. Dreamweaver will then automatically understand that there is a second file attached to this one. And just like when you're playing with CSS files, it lets you jump back and forth between the two. Sure. Just that? That's all, only the thing I've done. Yeah.
Oh, quick question. How many of you guys need the database class over the summer for Web Developer 2? Okay. Hannah does. You've already got it. You're taking it and you're taking it now? Okay. So I'm, try I'm trying to get it offered over the summer because a couple of people will need it, but I need to know a head count because they want eight students to take it. I'm a little worried about that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so basically I need to start we need to start working over here in this this form functions page so I need to put in a nice little PHP block code here and this is the line that will actually create the function doesn't do anything but it's there. This is kind of like that's creating the selector in CSS. Because this is going to be uh, why the question is why doesn't it have any doc type? This is just going to be an include file. And the way include files work is as soon as in my main page, as soon as the PHP gets to this line, it goes, it loads this file, copies everything, pastes it where the include function is. Then the cursor goes back to the top of it and starts running that PHP code, or HTML or CSS, whatever it is that's been included. If I included a doc type on this functions page, I would this page would, when it was fully assembled and parsed out, it would have two doc types. We don't want that. That would be bad. Okay, the first thing I want to do is just see if I can get the thing to output a output the string um, uh, of what a um, form is uh, drop down menu is supposed to look like. Does anyone know what a drop down menu the code is? Not off the top of my head. Yeah, I forget too. So let's build one real quick that we'll use as a template in the, the functions page. So I'm going to go grab my form. I'm going to do a select list menu. And I'll call it state state I said, so we're going to drop a, a, a HTML one in, and I'm just going to put a couple of little states in here, MD, West Virginia, that's good. If you guys haven't played with these too terribly much, under forms, it's a select list menu. Give it an ID and label of both state. And then down at the bottom, in the properties inspector, there's an option called list values. You can click on that and add a couple of fake states. Well, I guess you can add real ones. And I think the way that we want to do this is, is similar to this. We want to be able, the item label should be the full name of the state, and then the value is going to be the two letter abbreviation. And we're just going to put two in because I just need to see what this looks like. The other thing that you're allowed to do with drop down menus is there's an initially selected state. And basically, when this comes up, which one do you want to be selected first? And there's an actual HTML tag that controls that. Here is what the HTML ends up looking like I've got a label then it's basically an unordered list. That's really the, the HTML structure behind this. There's a select that goes around the beginning and end of it, and then every option tag is a new value that gets dropped into the, in, into the dropdown. This is the command selected equals selected that will actually tell the computer which one should automatically be chosen at the beginning of the um, when the page is, is created. That's useful if you're creating a form that people have already filled out. Like if you want to edit your existing billing address, you have to create the form, but then you have to put the values already in it that they uh, had when they initially filled out the form.
So I'm actually going to take this entire thing and cut it and drop it over in my function. Obviously none of this works. It needs to be in some sort of echo statement. I cut it. Right. Yeah, we, we're going to need it. We're, we're going to dissect this and, and do all kinds of crazy stuff to it, but um, yeah. This is the part that we're going to have to repeat through 50 times. So yeah, the label, the select, and the slash select, we just need the function to sort of print those out for us. Those are going to be pretty simple. Well, I can just That part I can just do echo label, actually I want to do single quotes, down to state, put a semicolon, and then do the same for my so the ending select. And it's the options that we'll have to do a nice little for loop, print them all out. Let me make this just slightly nicer. I just broke up the label and select into three lines. I put print out the label. This prints out a line break in my HTML. So th these two will now be on two separate lines rather than strung together on one giant long line which is a little bit harder to read. In fact, if I wanted to, one, two, three, I could put my select statements, indent them a little bit, so that if, if I crack open the HTML, it's a little bit more readable. Now, oh my god, what do we do with this? Well, actually, before I do that, there's one other thing that I want you to consider. When we create a um, our form elements, part of the reason of, uh, of creating this as a function, this dropdown, is that we can have it in multiple places uh, in the same form. So we could have a billing address, a shipping address, a gift certificate address, something like that. And so every element in the in the every form element has to have its own unique name. So right now, if we were to put two state dropdowns on the page, they would both have the, the same name of state, and that's bad. What would happen is if we chose West Virginia in the first one and then Maryland in the second one, when you hit submit because they both have the same name, only the second one actually gets submitted. Actually what happens is the first one gets submitted and the second one overwrites that one. So we have to be able to give these two unique names. They have to have some separate names. When you want to customize each instance that a function appears on a page, that's when we have to start putting those arguments into it. So I'm going to create a value up here called name. Now what this means is that back in my source code, on the first page, I need to be able to put a value inside, this is back in the form page, the first one that actually has the form on it. I need to send an argument from this one. If I end up creating another instance of this, it'll have to be shipping name. And this is perfectly legal, you could do this as well right now. So the first time through, it'll run, it'll run through, it'll grab billing name in this argument over in form functions. But now it does mean that I'm allowed to 
do this. Label for state name or for state. I don't want it to say label for state. Every every where it says state here, I want this one, this one, this one, and this one to be replaced with this variable. So this will be fun. I gotta get some concatenators in there. Dollar name. That's pretty much what I have to do in several spots. Mm. Yeah. So be careful because I, I put all of these in single quotes. So the double quotes are characters that get printed inside the single quotes. What I did was I put in two single quotes, I went back in, put the two periods, then in between the two periods I put the variable name, then I took that little section and I copied and pasted it into those four places. Are you starting to see, did you see what I'm doing? So the first, the first instance of the first call is going to send through billing address, and all of those are going to get labeled as billing address, and then the second time, they'll all be shipping address. Okay. Now, right now, this isn't going to work because these two lines are flipping out. Let's see if this actually does what it's supposed to. You're going to get an error if you leave these two lines on. So I'm going to comment them out. I'm going to go back to my form and I'm going to run this. And I don't know if Xamp's up and running. It is not. What's that? I commented this out. I still have an error. Well, I probably do too. Let's see what. I don't have an error. I'm amazed at that. Okay, so it says I got label for billing name and then the label is billing name. Select and then it closes the select. So there's just, just no options popping up here. And then label, hmm, it looks like after the last select I should probably have one of those slash ends again. So take this line. Drop it in. Let's see if that changes it a little bit better. F5. <coughs> Source. Okay, now they get dropped down on their own separate lines. I like that. Actually, if this is where my options are going to go, they should be on their own line too. Right. Maybe add another one. And then I'll let you guys copy and paste and start debugging at this point. I think this will this is gonna get it to where I want it. Yeah, there we go. My labels. Then the the two select statements appear to be coming through. Now, you probably noticed that my label the name and the label itself, maybe they should be different. Billing underscore name is not really a great label. It should be like billing state or maybe it should just be state um, but I don't know what it's gonna be maybe I think maybe that should be a second variable that's perfectly viable in this in this instance um, so what I do is I would call this a new one I'd call it label so I think that makes sense and it's gonna be this one right here the second one in we'll change that one so we expect that one to be a nice, human-readable uh, label instead of the name of, that it's of the form element. Which means, back in my first page, I not only have to have billing name, maybe this should have been billing state. Save it, huh? 
Okay, so now they just say pretty plain old state, but when I view the source, one of them has the nice hidden the name of billing state, and the other one is shipping state. So even though they say the same nice label, their names are different. All right, let me bring the code back up. Yeah. I left the first one. That'll be the actual name of the the, the text box. And then what do you what pretty name do you want beside it as the label? And it's okay if these are the same. These just have to be different. Okay, there's your PHP. At the end of yours, it should just be this. You've got an extra set. It doesn't like those. Okay. Now, the fun part here is that we need to create an array that's going to hold all of the states. And we want it to have, from this array, we want to be able to pull the state name. So we'll have, we want to be able to have Alabama and also be able to pull out of it, what is it, A, L. We want both of these pieces of information stored in the array. Um, but we want it for air all 50 states. So that means we have 100 pieces of information that we need to store. Um, with a, an array, that's actually pretty easy to store two pieces of information for, for each item. We can do that with, if you remember, associative arrays. So if you can remember back a few weeks to all the array stuff. To do this, I'm going to create an array called states. States equal array Put some parentheses up. And then we're going to put all, f we, uh, f this is the last time you'll ever have to type all 50 states. But we will have to do this. Um, the first one, if you remember arrays, they always start at position zero. And then you have this little guy. It's like you're basically making a tiny little arrow. And I'm going to try and put these in alphabetical order. Now it doesn't have to, you don't have to use a zero. Arrays, by default, if you don't give each position a name, it's just zero through however many there are. So this would be zero through 49. Instead, what you are allowed to do is instead of zero, you can actually give them a distinctive name, like this. And this is what, if you remember the vocabulary term, this is an associative array, rather than a numeric or integer array. Now, unfortunately, we have to do them all. What I'm going to do is take this little guy right here, and make sure you put a comma at the end of each one. Four, five, ten, twenty, thirty, forty. I think I just pasted in fifty. I'm not sure. I won't know until I actually fill them all in. have to be capitalized. 
Has anybody got all the states memorized? Me neither. I'm also trying to put them in alphabetical order. We can, they don't have to be in alphabetical order. There is an alphabetize function for, um, for arrays. I really don't want to have to worry with it though. Also, if everything is nice and alphabetized, if I ever need to come back and change anything, it's probably going to be a lot easier for me to figure it out here if they're already alphabet alphabetical. District of Columbia. I guess we should probably have that one as well. That one's pretty important. So we're, it looks like we're going to have to have 51. again just to make sure that it's not throwing up an error there. Okay. I think my code is correct just because my array was correctly created just because I'm not getting an error when I rerun the page. That's definitely an important step at this point because if I screw up now I should know now and not figure it out later. Okay, so now what we need to do is get these options to actually print out with the information that's in the array. And the way that we're going to do this is with a for each loop. The for each is specifically designed to step through an array. So after these echo statements, I'm going to create a so caps lock on for each. Oh, you know what? I'm going to do this. My array name is states. And so now it knows it, that's the array that it's supposed to loop through. I can get it to give me the state name and the state value if I do this. State name as state little arrow symbol ABBR. So as it jumps through the um, through the loop, it's going to create the, the state name, this part, where Wyoming, Alabama, all of those, that's going to get thrown into the variable state. And then the two-letter abbreviation is going to get thrown into the to the ABBR uh, variable. Now would it matter if your abbreviations came or on the left? I would just swap these so that you know which one's which. But basically, if I just do echo state dot space dot ABBR, and I'll put a, a line break at the end of that. I just want to see if I can get this stuff to work. What this should do in my code, yeah. It's not properly formatted yet, but it is actually putting in all of the co all of the text. So it's putting in the state and then the abbreviation. Good. It is actually seems like it's going to work. It 
except I don't want actually want this. I want it to output this guy. Yeah, where I have state, you have ABBR and vice versa. So, my echo statement. I need it to echo out what basically looks like one of these option tags. So let me put this guy here, and let me get rid of this line. That was just a, a test. So I need to echo option value as I'm going to do this all on a whole bunch of different lines. I don't need the selected equals selected, but I do need dollar state. And then I'm going to echo one of these little line breaks. Let me see if that did it. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh my god. I might have done it. Woo! Ha -ha. Yes, I will leave that there for you to copy now. The only other thing that I'd like to accomplish with this particular drop-down is to be able to automatically select one of those states so that Alabama is not necessarily the first one in the list. And again, this is if you've already filled out your profile with your address. When you go to edit your profile, if you live in Maryland, Maryland should be the one that you that's already selected for you because that's the one you previously selected. There's a pretty common function on um, form elements to be able to, to pick one or to put a value in there automatically. So put all that on two lines, three lines. Um, ooh, what's up? You got it to work? Good. Um, in order to do that, I think we need to add one more item to the to the arguments. A an optional argument that's going to be called selected because we don't have to. If we're coming to this, if we're going to use this on a page where somebody's registering for the first time, we can't automatically select one. We don't know which one they've picked previously. So that means this is kind of optional. We don't have to have this. And what I would suggest is set it equal to nothing. That way when we put this in, selected is is not required. It's already got a value. And here's the fun part. 
To make this work, we've got to go way back down, excuse me, into the for each loop. We have to examine every single option in here every single time to see if it matches selected. So I'm going to say zero, but most of the time people are going to put in state, comma, MD. Okay, so they'll put in Maryland, and that's the one I want selected by default for this particular one. So I need an if statement in every single iteration through this echo to see if we should put selected equal selected. If on the first iteration through, if selected equals AL, we'll type in selected equals selected. If not, just go to the next one. If uh, selected equals Alaska or AK, we'll keep going. And it's got to go right here. If you remember the um, where it basically works is selected equal selected. That's what it's supposed to be. But basically, I need to interrupt right at this point, right before the closing bracket of the first option value. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to do option value abbreviation. It's got the, the double quotes around it. And then I'm going to close that one off. Then I need to come down and finish this guy so it's on its own line. And then it's if statement time. Let's see if I can think of this the right way. If selected equals ABBR, and ABBR changes every single time through here, then echo selected equals selected. And I'm going to put a space that down. There we go. A space right here because otherwise it'll butt up right against this double quote. Ugh, that one's tough. Take a few minutes to see if you can understand that. Should spell it correctly. Selected. Let me see if I did it right. Apparently not. They're all selected equal selected. <laughs> if selected equals it. It's printing it out correctly. I mean it's it's not the HTML isn't wrong. But obviously, they shouldn't all be selected. That would be dumb. How did I do that? Why isn't this if statement working? It's a double equals. I'm not screwing that up. Isn't ABBR the second argument? Or oh, you know what? On the one that I have Maryland selected, it's fine. But the one where I don't have it selected, or that I don't have a value, an argument for that, it's just giving it everywhere. So let me see. That's the exact same code that I've got here. Why don't you want to work? Why don't I do this instead? Um, what I actually have in my code is instead of zero, I have it set to the string none because that's not a state name, that's not an abbreviation. I should never actually have to worry about it. Let's see if, it'll, if that fixes it. Ah, that did it. Good. None of them are selected in the second instance, and Maryland selected in the first one. So, first off, make sure you've got that. I think for some reason, because it's zero, it's it can't compare a number to a a string, and somehow it's just coming up true. That seems odd. Should still come up false. But the way I got that changed to Maryland. Here are my two instances. 
the two function calls. One of them I added MD, and the other one does not have a selected one at the end. Yes. Ooh, you know what we can do? Watch this. I can make this slightly more robust. Or selected equals state. So now you can either type in as that third argument, you can type in MD or Maryland. On this one, I could type in North Dakota, and I think it should still work. Oop, I need a comma. North Dakota gets selected. Let me go back to my form functions. There's the for each for you. Syntax errors? No? Does it appear to be working? Sweet. Andrew, what is it saying? That was it? Okay. Uh, in, since we only have 15 minutes, yes. Uh, I have a, a slightly more robust version of this that I've used for my own personal websites where I also include the. Um, the outline territories, American Samoa, Guam, Puerto Rico, all of those other ones, and then there's also military zip codes that you might need. Um, and then I actually have a fourth argument that is uh, you can take a number, and depending on the number, each one corresponds to which ones that you want to add. So and you, you certainly don't have to do this one. There's a, I call it pattern. Pattern is supposed to be a, a number from 0 to 4. And if, if there's, I'm sorry, pattern equals 0 by default. So 0, it's just states. Um, I think what I actually have is a bunch of, is a switch case. Remember these? You don't have to do this. I'm just going to show you how you can make this bigger and more complex. In the case that pattern is zero, then I create an array that's basically just a copy of this array. Basically nothing happens. In the case that it's one, I'm going to add two arrays together. It'll be states plus, there's actually another array called territories. And it basically just, this plus command will take the territories and just append it to the end of the states. If the case is two, then it's states plus military. If it's three, it's going to be all of them, states plus Plus military. And I know n n this isn't proper code, but I just don't have much time. Yeah, and should they put in anything else in a switch case? You remember switch cases are basically just a whole bunch of if statements? 
the switch case is basically the default is just the same as case zero. Should somebody put it in fifteen for some odd reason, or QWERTY, you know, something stupid, it'll just default over to regular plain old states. Then under here, it, it, we don't actually run through states. Each one of these actually builds a, a new array, depending on which one the user tells it to go through. And then it's going to go through all of those. It'll be basically, I think it's just new states, something like that. And so it'll go through the whole new list, but it doesn't. It up here just builds out. It just adds new options to your, um, your list of states. That's the only other way I've been able to improve this. I'm going to get rid of all that junk. We don't need a pattern anymore. And I actually have my form functions actually has like 20 different forms on it. I've got a drop down for every country. Um, I've got ones for all the other common stuff that we end up using. Gender, title, so it's Mr., Mrs., all of those things. And then there's a giant list of all the English surnames that you can have. Duke, uh, Sir, Knight, I don't know, whatever they all are. Um, I've, I found that entire list. Months, dates, years. God, how big is the state, the countries? It goes from line 147 to line 386. So it's 250 countries of the world. That one took a while. Because I found out every country has a two letter extension, a three letter extension, and a three number extension. Ugh. So I've got it set up so that you can have, the pattern is, it'll put the, the country name and then which of those three things do you want to be the value. It's a, so it just depends on how you set up your database, what, what it is you want to collect. I should probably just make that two letter extension because no one's ever going to use the, other, the others. So that's it, that's all I got. <laughs>